योग कर्मसु कौशलम गुड आफ्टरनून फ्रेंड्स टुडे लेट अस डिस्कस अबाउट अ वेरी इंटरेस्टिंग टॉपिक कॉल्ड रिस्ट्रक्चरिंग एंड रीडिजाइनिंग ऑर्गेनाइजेशंस आई एम विलास कुलकर्णी एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर एट पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ बिजनेस मैनेजमेंट सरदार पटेल यूनिवर्सिटी वल्लभ विद्यानगर इफ यू लुक एट ऑर्गेनाइजेशन टूडे बी इट इन एनी सेक्टर यू फाइंड दैट दे आर ट्राइंग टू रिस्पॉन्ड टू द चेंजेस इन द एनवायरमेंट दे आर ट्राइंग टू अडेप्ट टू द चेंजेस बी इट कॉम्पिटिटर्स पॉलिसी और गवर्नमेंट मूव और एनी चेंज इन इकोनॉमी एंड इन दिस प्रोसेस दे आर डूइंग समथिंग इंटरनली which with the one of the ways which they are responding is restructuring or redesigning their organizations look at some recent news about restructuring these this news will tell you that there is no sector or no industry which is left from or which is not restructuring its organizations look at gitanjali gems one of the largest companies in gems the plan is to create a separate companies for manufacturing brands international retail domestic retail and infrastructure under a holding company now this company has moved from a younger to a more matured workforce today gitanjali gems is a completely integrated player but all different businesses are under one head at at the moment look at godrej godrej does not have scale or differentiation for example its agri services and rural retail ventures aadhar it was sold to future group in 2008 godrej high care its pest control business was sold to a danish company iss in 2009 now as the competition intensifies or increases in the country the godrej has been forced to focus on its core business this news tells us that large players like Go- like godrej and one of the oldest players in india they are also finding it slightly difficult to respond to the environment and internally they are trying to change their structure which which can be termed as a restructuring of this company now this restructuring can either be a change in a structure for expansion or consolidation of services or either cutting down some or the other layers or closing down some of the other businesses look at what today we want to do the agenda for uh, today's discussion here is let's look at what exactly a restructuring means let's try to understand why do organizations restructure there may be uh, various reasons and each organization or each company has you know various ways or various reasons for going for restructuring one of the term highly associated with again restructuring is turn around like you know after restructuring the organizations uh, you know uh, they turn around themselves and go from uh, a loss making to a profit making business let's understand what are the issues to be considered while going for turn around or within or, or after turn around let's also understand how culture and restructuring are connected let's try to focus on do's and don'ts while you are restructuring so apart from other examples uh, one of the uh, good examples which has a uh, longitudinal study uh, sort of you know is aditya birla group how it has uh, restructured between 2015 and 2020 and at the end uh, one of the very interesting topic because it is associated with restructuring most of the companies when they restructure uh, their uh, their hierarchies 
they go for downsizing their organizations so we will have a, a detailed discussion on how to go for the down, downsizing and do's and don'ts of again downsizing see this restructuring are essentially arbitrary and an attempt to put some rational into managing an organization here uh, it's very clear that uh, it's not an automatic uh, you know exercise for example when organizations expand they automatically add units or manpower to their company so it's an uh, so called organic uh, development when we talk of restructuring it is a well thought of process and it's a arbitrary process by which we are making some changes in our structure now often it is said that the first thing new managers do is to restructure this is often true with a lot of managers like when they take when they take over any company it is said that uh, they they try to understand or they try to find out what is wrong in this company and try to restructure the work uh, the hierarchy or some processes which they feel which would be more efficient or beneficial to the organization look at industry body like fikki fikki itself is restructuring now what started with a few people uh, fikki as a few people is now 600 people organization its budget has gone up from 3 crore to 120 crores today why restructure always people uh, or organizations think why to go for restructuring so as i said there can be many reasons uh, and there can be customized reasons why organizations go for restructuring some of the positive uh, reasons let us talk about to change the culture as we said earlier that when managers take over or when a uh, top management or a board changes they trying to change the culture like for example there are uh, various types of banks in india some are aggressive some are uh, sort of slow or lethargic or, uh, banks so when a lethargic organization or a bank is taken over by a aggressive bank they they want to change uh, the old organization or the lethargic organization culturally so they take help of restructuring there that may include either uh, removing uh, few layers in the hierarchy or removing few people who are not so uh, not so good or uh, lazy or sort of you know not so efficient so one of the ways is to uh, one of the reasons potentially positive reasons is to change the culture to fit the organization's overall structure here uh, it may mean that organizations uh, when they uh, try to you know uh, expand organizations grow they want to add there's a need to add more number of manpower here when organization is uh, growing and when they when they are adding new manpower the structure uh, changes so they are trying to adjust to the uh, this manpower or uh, adjust this manpower to a new structure organic evolvement you see uh, organizations either when they grow or expand or when they diversify automatically uh, some layers are added some specializations are added some new units are added so when organizations evolve organically they restructure providing new opportunities like when organizations diversify when they look at new opportunities when there are uh, opportunities for development in a new market so they either expand horizontally or they focus uh, they they reduce their focus on some units and uh, increase their focus on the other units this also gives an opportunity for restructuring to change the workflows patterns of services as you know uh, in management or in uh, uh, in technology there are always new developments so there are new services or uh, new technological developments 
which help or which force the organizations to be more efficient and when we change the workflows or work patterns it is obvious it is obviously that uh, you know uh, the new type of uh, structure will be required and succession planning now this is often ignored like can succession planning uh, uh, should we restructure for succession planning so the answer can be yes look at organizations today i mean uh, big organizations pharmaceutical organizations there are a lot of examples where we have seen that many or uh, you know these organizations when the ceo or when the top manage, manager leaves for at least for some time there is a gap there is a gap at the uh, there is a vacuum at the top till a new ceo or a top manager is formed now sometimes we restructure for promoting lower level managers to the top level managers now this is just to ensure that whenever there is a vacuum the work is not suffered so these were some of the potentially positive reasons look at potentially negative reasons now as a coin has two sides like many people use a restructuring just to fix problems which are mostly immediate ones like you know uh, just closing down a plant or just by bypassing some process and naming it as a restructuring right to downsize now it's of course like once sometimes when you restructure there are a lot of chances that people would uh, would be reduced like people would be uh, you will go for downsizing but restructuring just to downsize people may not be right if it is a by product or outcome of restructuring that people uh, need to be reduced then it is fine one of the reasons is because you can to shake up things often it is seen and said that when a new manager takes over or when someone there is a change of guard people want to show that uh, they can do something so they will change some or the other things and they will try to shake up the things they will try to uh, tell you that things are to be done in this way to make your mark they will announce something they will reduce uh, the layers in the hierarchy some units would be uh, would be closed these are all things which may not be very useful but this will help to make uh, make your mark as a manager to get rid of people who are underperforming or you just don't like as we know managers are quite bi biased some are very heavily biased towards someone or or a few people so just i if just because i want to get rid of these people i want to go for downsizing so these are some of the negative reasons for downsizing look at this chart friends here uh, it's trying to uh, explain like how restructuring is connected with uh, various factors now look at in middle there's a original state of the company there are external changes or there are external forces which force the company to make some changes and there are internal changes like inefficiencies organization politics something like this now when you go for you want to change something the first thing probably what they are trying to uh, the managers will try to do is develop a strategy and a restructuring project this restructuring may be at a hierarchical level or in a process flow something uh, it can be anything they will try to develop a strategy or a project coordinating key principles points of restructuring that what will impact uh, you know restructuring will, will impact whom what will happen to these processes what will happen to these process uh, these people who are involved then you have a restructuring procedure here either it can be a step by step process either it can we will have a pilot project pilot project on one product i mean uh, one unit 
or it can be a one time overall uh, organization uh, restructuring procedure and then we we'll try to understand after some time we we'll try to analyze the effectiveness let us understand how do organizations go for restructuring as i said earlier there can be various reasons and various ways of going for restructuring so one of the very famous or most known uh, style of restructuring is merger and acquisition here look at companies like indus tower and bharti infratel in 2020 you know bharti infratel tried to integrate the administration operations technology and uh, products of two of the firms that's how you know uh, many companies do because they are uh, in hurry of expanding so they try to integrate uh with some uh, some company which would be helpful to them look at legal structure you know the legal uh, complications or legal requirements now changing the legal structure of a firm such as ownership structure so this can be one of the uh, ways of going for restructuring look at uh, financial in financial uh, there can be change in capital structure turn around restructuring operations administrations products etc like what happened with oriental bank of commerce tv18 broadcasting etc there's a uh, one way is repositioning it's like moving a business unit to a new business or operation model for example moving from selling softwares to servicing softwares companies like dabas snapdeal godrej all have used repositioning as a method of restructuring cost restructuring this uh, probably is one of the very uh, it's famous uh, way of restructuring is cutting administrative and operational cost disinvestment selling or closing business units which are unprofitable non strategic or problematic majority of the government owned companies like air india bsnl mtnl or many other uh, private firms also they have used this way of uh, you know uh, uh, restructuring spin off spin off is uh, restructuring a business unit to be its own company while retaining some ownership now spin off is often done to seek a high valuation for an attractive part of business Uh, to understand it better, a spin-off is a is when a company takes a portion of its operation and breaks it into a separate entity. When spin-off happens, investors in the parent company automatically become investors in the subsidiary through a like tax-free distribution of new shares, or new shares can purchase shares of one or both the companies. In 2011, Expedia created a spin-off company, TripAdvisor. In 2012, Crafts Food Incorporation created a spin-off company, Crafts Food Foods Group Incorporation. Similarly, in 2017, eBay created spin-off company, uh, termed as PayPal. now there are again i said right and wrong reasons for restructuring but when you research or when you read about restructuring more wrong reasons are uh, ironically seen like a newly appointed senior is pressurizing others for a restructure as i said you know every manager has a different way of looking at organizations or even different way of uh, defining how and what an efficient organization is so when a new ceo comes in some old employees disappear within a few weeks and new ones often choose by ceo uh, chosen by the ceo to join the company now letting the trusted employees own employees go is not at all a right way of restructuring the company now thinking that restructuring will solve all the problems now this is a a big mistakes when when managers do even though restructuring a department can shake up things 
shake things up and offer better results things may not be still be perfect now restructuring is not the only process that you should focus on it can be a method of uh, creating a more efficient organization you may also want to try things to obtain better results like or a, like a new marketing strategy of four day work week allowing employees to work from home sometimes to boot, uh, boost the job satisfaction so what i am trying to say here is that just thinking that restructuring will solve all the problems may not be right there have been multiple failed restructures before now this is self explanatory if restructuring the organization has not worked before it may not be wise to try it again and again either it can be a totally wrong idea to restructure that's why that's why you would have failed or the managers are not well versed with the method by which restructuring should be done look at the right reasons again see the most common scenarios in which restructuring is done can be operational efficiency probably this is the most common because this may be uh, easy to explain or easy to justify just ask questions like do you have multiple people doing the same job when only one person is enough to handle it if the answer is yes then restructuring may be a good idea do you have some staff members who are always overworked and others who don't have enough work again if the answer is yes then you are looking towards operational efficiency like you know some people have the attitude like that's how we have done it now this attitude can lead to an efficient inefficient daily operations and reduce productivity so if you have if you feel that restructuring may optimize the potential of the staff or increase the productivity or it can actually um, shake up or uh, you know erase a good sort of uh, spirit in the employees then restructuring may be a good idea financial burden like even though this may be a very unpleasant situation a lack of funding or declining revenue means that organizations are going to have to restructure their business to cut costs this may include either um, stopping the unnecessary expenses or either uh, renegotiating the bank uh, i mean the, the the interest on the loans which you have taken or either it may be uh, you know making your uh, Uh, I mean, getting the raw materials at a lower rate by again renegotiating the contracts. Mergers, mergers and acquisitions can be a great way to combine forces and emerge as a more powerful business. Now, however, mergers with mergers there come changes, and these changes in processes. organization structure personal as well as products and services merger because merger creates uh, changes or it forces changes in both the uh, both organizations and these changes have to be on almost on the all fronts so restructuring is needed digital transformation look at how the covid 19 has taught us the importance of digitalizing our businesses however with great digital transformation also comes restructuring needs look at the banks which have digitalized uh, railways which have digitalized and digitalization has forced these organizations either to cut down the manpower either reshuffle their organization transfer them at either retrain or reskill their uh, organization uh, their manpower or when they are looking at future um, services or future hiring they are looking at people who are digitally uh, or are into information and technology savvy now one of the final outcomes 
of any restructuring activity should be like either the company should be in profit either it should be uh, you know uh, efficient or uh, it should do something good which or it should stop making mistakes which it was doing earlier so often when we have see when we associate this word with uh, restructuring we have another word called turn around now let's turn around and understand this first a turn around strategy is a retrenchment strategy is a plan for those times when things are not going to plan when an organization experiences financial distress management puts in place a strategy to get things back on the track a turn around is essentially to the survival of a failing business a turn around is a sustained positive change in the performance of a business to obtain desired results another way of defining a uh, turn around is it's a successful a uh, successful turn around is a complex procedure that requires a strong management team and sound business core putting all this into a nutshell this means that turn around is something which actually you don't have planned but the conditions have forced the organizations to do this this is related to restructuring because when you want your your organization to uh, to get turn around there should be a restructuring strategy in place look at various reasons why organizations should go for turn around continuous losses when uh, the the sales are uh, dipping down or when there are continuous revenue losses there has to be something to be done poor management now these are all interrelated because of poor management there will be continuous losses so poor management of resources people or strategy uh, it can include everything wrong corporate strategies which the uh, predecessors have put into place or those strategies which were right at that point of time but today they may not be working persistent negative cash flows like continuous losses which results in uh, negative cash flows high employee uh, employee attrition rate now this is often seen even in uh, best of the best companies like attrition uh, rate is high look at uh, uh, what's happening to software industry today we talk of a great attrition uh, phenomena so high attrition may also mean that uh there is a need for turn around poor quality of functional management declining market share uh your products are either becoming uh, redundant or uh the competitors are gaining uh, market share with better products and updated services look at if your products are uncompetitive or your services are uh, not in demand then there is a, a need for turn around generally there are three phases in turn around management diagnosis of a, of the problem faced by the company understand where is the shoe pinching which are the areas which require a turn around is there a turn around, overall turn around needed or is there a turn around at a unit level or at a functional level choosing an appropriate turn around strategy like how uh what should be the um, timeline from where we should start who will lead the team who would be responsible for turn around and generally the last phase is implementation of the turn around strategy some organizations uh, which have achieved turn around uh, how they have achieved turn around is like change in management companies like uh, yes bank Indusind Bank, Tata Motors, CG Power. Here, these organizations have made changes in their uh, management team at all, almost all the levels, and they have um, successfully achieved a turnaround. Change in strategy. It is possible that company emerges profitable from being a loss-making one due to the appropriate changes in business strategy. 
Look at in 2006, Dell announced a cost-cutting measures and to do so, it started selling its products directly uh, to the customers. However, it suffered huge losses. This did not work for Dell. In 2007, Dell withdrew its direct selling strategy and started selling its computers through retail outlets. And as you know, today it's one of the largest retailers in the world. Uh, retail, uh, largest computer making, uh, selling companies in the, the world. Now, new product launches. New product launches can be extremely important for organizations that are going through a rough patch. Look at uh, Procter & Gamble India. These companies or many of the companies in this sector uh, continuously they have, you know, uh, they have come up with a new products, either new variants of a product, uh, new uh, products in new size, etc., where uh, they have tried, they have achieved turnaround. Government initiatives. It's rare, but it's possible that a company may become profitable going to the government policy decisions or initiative to promote and protect a particular industry. Often it is seen, seen that Government of uh, government of various countries bring uh, policies for protecting some industries or uh, you know promoting some industries either by, by the way of uh, soft loans, long term loans, or uh, giving other facilities like tax benefits, um, subsidized electricity, etc. This may also help you help the organization in uh, turnaround. Look at this curve. Now, turnaround is a process where not everyone would be happy. This graph, this chart uh, or a line talks about various phases where organizations are, uh, uh, by which organizations have to pass who are passing through turnaround. Look at this. Always there is a sense of well-being performance. Every organization or majority of the managers, they feel that the organization is performing at its best and nothing else needs to be done. However, look at this, this axis is time. Now, when there is a re reduction in performance at any point of time or there is a reduction in performance at several times, or for a longer time, there's a shock. All managers, they feel that, um, you know, is it, uh, is that our organization is uh, not doing well? They may ask each other. Or there's a rumor that, you know, uh, organization is not doing well and managers take it as a shock. But however, they may not accept it. Yes, that we are not doing well. Uh, one of the phases is, the second phase is, they deny. They say that, no, it's not happening. Some managers may say that it's temporary. Some managers say that uh, the economy is not doing well. Some may say that the preferences are slowly changing. So, the reduction in performance, by any means, would be denied by managers at uh, for a longer time. However, well, these all, the time here is not very good. There are emotional traumas, people fear that the company may close down, there will be anger, there will be blame game, some would be scapegoat, there will be some scapegoating. Some people feel guilty, uh, a, a sense of guilt that we have not been able to perform well. Some may be sad, being grieved. These all emotional turmoil or emotional, um, you know, emotional experiences people may have. Now, as the time passes, there is an acceptance of, yes, you know, we are not doing well and there is some need, some things to be done. So, people start accepting that, let's, you know, forget the past, let's start something new. The past has gone, look at future and as a result, new ideas and strategies are developed. 
here either there may be a new team which is working with the older team either there may be uh, a, a younger generation which would be given um, the responsibility or those or those innovative people uh, creative people in the in our nation may be cropped in uh, to take up a new stand uh, to uh, suggest new ideas and set up new strategies and the next phase may be search for meaning why we are doing this you know what would be our future etc and then the last phase may be integration of all those ideas strategies so that uh, you know the company has uh, company company can achieve turn around some explanation about turn around curve <coughs> how staff react at a time change time of change there will be various reactions shock grief denial now the stages of emotional responses and how these may affect staff performance at work may change the stages may be slower faster overlapping again coming back to the original this model shows a single process however the staff may be in multiple processes at a different stages managers here need to understand the stages and make time for the staff during uh, during them often it is said that uh, machines may work very smoothly but emotions may not that's how that's why managers need to take a special care of the emotional imbalances which their manpower or which their staff would have in the in this process of turnaround although turnaround uh, as we said earlier it's not a easy process there are some issues which needs to be considered very carefully while uh, we are turnaround now identifying the problem reason rational for a new structure this is very important that the top management makes it clear to everyone that why we are going for a turnaround without this there will be more rumors and there will be a lot of ambiguity uh, while working for turnaround process setting objectives for restructuring these objectives should be as clear as possible as measurable as possible and you know uh, they should be framed in such a way that majority people understand the organization involvement of stakeholders now in turn around many of the people would be adversely affected it's very important that those affected should be involved in the whole process the communication should be as transparent as possible staff perceptions as said as earlier because there are uh, this ambiguity there are rumors uh, there will be uh, mistrust so the staff perceptions have to be taken care of scale of restructuring it's important to understand that the scale of restructuring uh, will it be bigger or uh, smaller or it will be unit wise or it will be uh, for the whole company as such managers should understand the cycles of restructuring and therefore cynicism the time involved often managers are in in a hurry for turn around which generally does not work uh, it has to be given enough time the appropriate time required time for retraining trial periods and settling the new structures because the structures are new the type of work is new uh, people need to be trained or retrained or reskilled there should be time given for settling down making errors rectifying those errors and at the end the evaluation of the change should be uh, undertaken some more issues like people emotions as said earlier has to have to be taken into consideration 
the whole process should look objective. It should be not only objective, but it should also look objective. That's one of the success uh, factors of turnaround. And the institutions and uh, institutional agreements and processes have to be as clear as possible. Now, how culture and restructuring are connected? Uh, all those cultures, subcultures, they would change when there is a restructuring. Now, you have to understand, the need for restructuring has arisen because the culture, there was some problem in the culture of the organization. And when we restructure, the culture is going to be affected. However, our ultimate objective should be performance or organization efficiency. So these cultures should be, you know, connected. Culture and restructuring should be connected and the change in culture and restructuring has, go, has to go in hand in hand, which will ultimately lead to organization performance and then organizational efficacy. If there is no connection between culture and restructuring, what will happen that even when the company has turned around after a few months or maybe a few years, it will come to the original position because people are not used culturally to adapt to the changes which are required for sustaining the uh, a high level of performance in the organization. So what some more issues, you know, be clear about the proposed structure. Research says that if we say people where we want to reach, it is easy for them to work with us. Think through potential redundancy at early stages. Generally, uh, what we have seen uh, in downsizing or in, in, in other places, uh, other uh, processes that people are said at the last moment that you are no longer required. So if you plan redundancies of machines, processes, people at early stage, the pain is less. Look at the worst case costing scenarios for voluntary redundancies or early retirements. Make calculations and think of the worst of the worst situation where people will react and train your managers for handling these scenarios. Write new job descriptions as early as possible. Now, assuming that this would be the role in a new structure, we should start the manager should start writing job descriptions. Process for getting everything in place, ring fencing of posts, promotion posts, interviewing options, it has to be planned at early stage. And then planning your diaries, uh, what, uh, what is to be done every day is also one of the issues. What not to do? Here we have seen that restructuring failed at many time. Uh, either there may be several reasons like managers are in hurry, their, uh, their vision is short term or they don't know how to do it or they have taken a wrong uh, process of uh, uh, doing restructuring. What you don't should not do is assume that restructuring is the only thing you have to do. You have to understand it only addresses one aspect of an organizational problem. When you want to turn around your organization or make it, uh, make it more efficient, restructuring is only one, one of the processes in it. It's not the ultimate process. Restructure in order to get individuals out instead of performance management. Think it, it is a quick fix. Never think that it will, it will work as you, as you wish. Things may go very and in very different directions. Never communicate badly. There should be least ambiguity. The 
communication should be as transparent as possible assume that someone else is handling the part of the process the ceo has to take charge the dog management has to take charge and everyone should be involved uh, as much as possible avoid planning the whole process before you start this is also important let staff believe that it is not a real consultation don't assume that restructuring is the only thing you have to do many people take restructuring as an ultimate solution this is not going to solve uh, your all the problems it only addresses one aspect of an organizing problem restructuring should be a way and not the ultimate goal restructure in order to get individuals out instead of performance management here we see that uh, because of the uh, biases or wrong performance management measures uh, many individuals are out get out of the system think don't think that it is a quick fix here we see uh, many of the managers when they think of uh, restructuring they think it as a quick fix solution or a short term goal that's not the way do not communicate badly be transparent as much as possible remove the ambiguity give a clear picture what's going to happen in future assume that don't assume that someone else is handling the part of the process for a successful restructuring the top management or the senior managers have to take charge avoid planning the whole process before you start and leave let staff believe that it is not a real consultation what works badly poor preparation and hasty approach to downsizing is not going to work not being able or prepared to give whole picture on one hand like one hand is tied behind the back again uh, a clear idea of what how our organization will uh, emerge in near future after turn around has to be taken have a weak rational for the project which we are uh, undertaking if people don't feel logic behind what we are doing then they may not support having some line managers undermining it through lack of knowledge lack of confidence inherent disagreement etc will also spoil the whole process of restructuring when number of different agendas come together because of the various circumstances the focus uh, of of the work uh, gets distracted and not thinking through the whole process will also uh, not give you success in restructuring look at a beautiful case of aditya birla group we know aditya birla group is uh, one of the largest indian conglomerates with a value of around uh, 48.3 billion us dollars uh, this comp- uh, this company is, in, is into aluminium rolling it's the world's largest manufacturer of aluminum rolling viscose table fiber and carbon black it's one of the fortune 500 companies having more than 120000 employees of over 42 nationalities the company is spread globally more than half of its revenue is generated from its overseas business operations this talks about you know uh, what aditya birla group is to name few industries it has indalco grassium industries limited ultra tech cement vodafone idea limited now avg entered into a number of mergers and acquisitions with other corporations the point here is that a large conglomerate like aditya birla also tries to respond to the environment tries to look into new markets and for that it undertakes a restructuring activity 
in this process the company went into a lot of uh, changes in between 2015 and 2020 like in particular more than a dozen of corporate restructuring has taken place only in last 5 years so look at let's look at what were the changes in april 2020 novelis india it's one of the ABG's largest and flagship companies acquired Alaris Corporation, a worldwide supplier of rolled aluminium, uh, rolled products of aluminium for US dollar 2.8 billion. Now this has made HIL as the largest aluminium company in the world. So this was for expansion or to become a uh, global leader. In 2019, GIL acquired 100% equity share of Soptas India Private Limited, a subsidiary of Turkish company dealing in textiles for Rs. 165 crores. In 2019, it also acquired one of the dotting businesses of KPR Industries Limited for 253 crore, that is chlor alkali through a some uh, slum sale. So what we are uh, understanding here is these acquisitions or uh, mergers were for uh, expansion. In 2019, Pinti Elegant Textile Industry, largest producer of rayon spun yarn in the world, entered into a definitive agreement for acquiring 74% stake in a 150 year old German based textile company, Spinnery Lamser GmbH. This was an outbound acquisition with a motive to enter into a new market by growing inorganically in the market. So, this was a move to again expand but into a new market. Now, Aditya Birla Fashion and Retail Limited, first billion dollar company dealing with Pure Play Fashion Powerhouse in India entered a partnership with Shantanu and Nikhil for acquiring 51% equity stake in a retail firm named as Messrs. Finesse International Design Private Limited. Again in 2019, it also inked a pact for acquiring 100% shareholding in an ethnic retailer Jaipur for Rs. 110 crore by the way of share purchase agreement. In 2018, it acquired Binani Cement, like Ultratech acquired Binani Cement. Idea Cellular, which is also known as Vodafone Idea Limited, sold standalone tower to ATC Infrastructure Private Limited. Now, this is a one of the places where uh, the businesses are reduced or sold. 2018, Idea Cellular merged with Vodafone India Limited, creating uh, Vodafone India, creating Vodafone India Limited. Uh, 2018, Ultratech Cement acquired a number of integrated cement plants and grinding units of J. Prakash Associate Limited for Rs. 16,118,189 crores. 2017, Aditya Villa. Uh, Corporation Limited formed a demerger of financial services business from GIL. 2016, Aditya Birla Nova Limited amalgamated with GIL and then the financial business services business which was, which was under ABNL has been demerged and comes into Aditya Birla Financial Services. Now the purpose behind this, this above merger was creating a huge blend of manufacturing unit with its services, business, service businesses across various sectors like cement, telecom, etc. for becoming the leaders in this field. What we have seen here uh, from the example of Aditya Birla is that restructuring for progress, restructuring for expansion, or also restructuring from for stop making uh, stopping making losses into those businesses and then either closing them or selling them 
one of the issues where uh, a painful process or an outcome of restructuring is downsizing simply known as uh, it is not necessary that every restructuring will have downsizing but in many cases or most of the cases it is seen that people lose their jobs either they become redundant or either they are not ready to reskill themselves so just look at literature what how is downsizing defined look at you know all the sectors across the globe the blood shed continues that means people keep on losing their jobs across the sectors even in the best flourishing economy there would be redundant people this happens because there are environmental factors internal factors organizations rarely have executives who have experience of managing downsizing situations there may be many reasons for it because downsizing uh, it does not happen every time secondly because it's a uh, very painful and emotionally uh, emotionally uh, you know exhausting process managers may not want to remember or may not actively take part in downsizing look at the list of companies who have reduced their manpower recently jet airways ford amazon flipkart ibm name a company and none of these companies is making losses so even in the best flourishing times downsizing will continue or continues so what is downsizing many authors uh, have defined it look at cameron and others 1991 they say that a set of activities undertaken on the part of organization to efficiency productivity or competitiveness freeman and others 1991 they define a simple uh, definition it's intended reduction in personnel like not automatically you want to reduce people so intended reduction in person downsizing is a deliberate organizational decision to reduce the workforce that is intended to improve organizational performance so the ultimate thing here is there are two things very necessary like one is reduction in workforce second is improvement in organization performance synonymously we use restructuring um you know word like restructuring right sizing voluntary retirement layoffs job cuts etc what in india or in other places uh, we have this voluntary retirement schemes which are also sometimes known as a uh, selective retirement scheme or compulsory retirement scheme so what may be the reasons for downsizing as there are reasons for uh, restructuring there may be reasons for downsizing cost reduction most one of the most popular reasons in here uh, the difference between cost reduction in restructuring and downsizing is that here we reduce cost by reducing people we calculate the salary of the number of people who have reduced and try to justify by multiplying it into 12 into number of years something like this environmental factors that may affect uh, downsizing like competition excessive staff as i said when technology changes or when the processes change some people become redundant in best of the best times so excessive staff or excessive staff was either recruited by the predecessors and when the company was doing well many people were employed which today may not be required other factors like more competitive markets product markets introduction of information technology new arrangements uh, new production arrangements or, or how the business processes have changed and new management uh, techniques one of the factors from uh, reasons from literature is pressure from the stockholders the shareholders or the, the other stockholders the greed to earn more money in short time they force the management to reduce people and reduce in in turn reduce the cost 
this you know uh, forces the dog management uh, to save salaries on the manpower salaries and work cost so after the reasons let us look at how does downsizing positively affects affects uh, the organizations of course when number of people are reduced uh, the per head cost would also be reducing so in actual terms you are saving money in case of uh, salaries less bureaucracy and faster decision making it is an assumption uh, that uh, you know when layers are cut the decision making will be faster because of the less uh, signatures or approvals needed and in many cases it is true also because there are less, less number of uh, communication channels and uh, a hierarchy is uh, uh, shortened that's why the communication may be uh, become better there would be increase in productivity of the employees the work would remain same and the number of employees uh, would reduce so if you calculate the input output ratio there would be increase in productivity of the employees job enrichment uh, it is often said that uh, workload enriches uh, the job in the case of downsizing when people are less and work keeps on expanding the existing manpower is re is required to learn more and take over a larger number of responsibilities this helps sometimes in job enrichment research says that whenever there is a announcement of uh, downsizing there is increase in stock prices at least for a shorter period of time it is seen that uh, the stock prices of that particular company increases now let us see the negative effects of downsizing for employees here uh, we have divided the negative effects uh, about employees survivors and organizations now these employees are uh, let us say those existing uh, employees who have uh, you know uh, who have survived uh or sorry who have uh, lost their jobs see the adverse uh, psychological effects like anxiety mental stress stress uh, or like depression and distress uh, losing a job itself in many social contexts is a stigma uh, because your whole family is dependent on the income you get every month so that's why it would definitely have an uh adverse psychological effects on the employees and that even on their family members no employee satisfaction morale commitment and increased absenteeism often it is seen that as soon as uh, the process of downsizing starts uh, people the uh, dissatisfaction among the employees increases and then there is a lot of ambiguity about what will happen in future so that reduces the morale of employees and the long term commitment to and to the organization also reduces there is increased absence this is uh, like employees feel that in any case i am going to be terminated so why not uh, why to go regularly and coupled with the psychological uh, adverse psychological effects the absenteeism increases high rate of admission whenever there is a announcement or the process of downsizing is going on there is a high rate of uh, at the most competent people would leave and those uh, not so competent and not not they are if they are not getting job uh, outside they would probably wait to be terminated or uh, or you know uh, wait for a company to announce something so that they can leave but the most employable and the most competent people would first leave the company which increases the rate of attrition breakup of social life 
as i said earlier uh, in many cultural context job is your identity job is your life so if you are not able to pay your bills regularly so socially this is going to be highly a tasking uh, a daunting task so there was a, there is a break of our social life social stigma of losing a job as said earlier uh, job is an important factor by which you would be known in your society now let us see the negative effects for organizations this loss of goodwill any company which goes for downsizing uh, in the market uh, there is a news uh, or there is a rumor that something is wrong that's why company is going for downsizing so there will there will be a loss of goodwill similarly the suppliers or the prospective employees or the current employees most of the stakeholders would low uh, rate the company as low there's a lot loss of trust among the employees since there would be increase in politics there would be more scope get uh, scapegoating so and the blame game goes on because what happened what happened in past because of whom this uh, what happened in past is not clear so the trust among the employees is 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 reduced this gives a uh, rise to an unhealthy environment in the company this results in loss of productivity because i don't trust anyone i don't want if i even if i want to take any initiatives i would be targeted if something goes wrong i would be scapegoated something um, then that these all lead to loss of productivity and as a result of this uh, unhealthy environment it's difficult to retain competent employees similarly because there is a loss of goodwill or low rate of company it's very difficult to attract good candidates now what we have seen here is we have to understand here is that organizations go for downsizing to improve performance but if you look at the negative effects at least the last two failing to retain talent and failing to attract good employees we see that when organization goes for downsizing the most competent people leave the the very purpose of downsizing was to was to get rid of those people who are not competent they are not so competent but mostly the most competent people would leave and if you want to replace these competent people with with the other ones it's difficult because of the loss of goodwill uh in the mark of the company in the market see the survivors uh, effect on survivors survivors are those people who are who have survived the downsizing that means who are currently working in downsizing they will also feel emotional psychological stress mental trauma and job insecurity this job insecurity itself would give rise to lot of psychological stress imagine a uh, imagine a situation where i was working with my colleague since last 15 years and today he is no more with this company and similar thing can happen with me there is a decrease of trust loyalty commitment morale and job involvement this will also uh, you have to see here that the work will not reduce but the number of people will reduce and coupled with the psychological stress or mental uh, mental trauma which uh, the survivors are going through we see that uh, there is a decrease in of trust loyalty and commitment breakdown of communication since there is increase in politics 
the uh, wrong climate in organization is uh, is being formed so i the people restrain from communication they don't want to be scapegoats that's why there's a breakdown of communication this will lead to greater intention of leaving so more, the competent employees will not wait for them to be terminated they would be looking already uh, looking for better opportunities so there is a greater intention of leaving and there is a reduced performance and organization effectiveness see the whole idea was to increase performance but the negative effects are so heavy that in many cases the performance of employees and of the organization reduces so let us look at what are the major reasons for failure of downsizing inadequate planning we have to see that if most of the time downsizing is taken as a last resort and it is done in haste managers seldom get enough time or they seldom plan for uh, uh plan for a long term so inadequate planning will definitely reduce the performance i mean uh, the success of uh, the chances of success of downsizing managers emphasize on short term goals which is again a very dangerous phenomena downsizing will lead to turn around and turn around takes time so if managers focus only on numbers or on short term goals like 3 months or 6 months it's going to be uh is going to fail ignoring the survivors most of the time the focus only is on victims and uh terminating people but those emotional trauma or the mental torture which the survivors uh, go through there are very few studies which says that which say that uh survivors are also taken care of so how to make uh, downsizing uh, uh, successful now let us see the successful strategies uh, strategies for successful downsizing it's very important to have proper planning of the objectives of downsizing if the homework done by managers is proper in many cases uh, there are chances that the downsizing would be successful similarly to reduce the the negative effects or the ambiguity or the mistrust among the employees the management should keep should adopt a proactive communication the communication should be as transparent as policy as possible this will help employees keep informed and uh, control the rumors which are caused during this period it's important that almost all the stakeholders be involved in the process of downsizing anyone who is left out would create rumors and this will hamper the whole process if the the management is able to uh, get the support of majority of the stakeholders the successful can be uh, the downsizing can be successful please look at this chart this gives a clear picture of what is downsizing and how it works the major causes of downsizing is given in uh, in one box there are effect on victims victims are those who have lost their jobs here it talks about 
effect on survivors at the down it talks about effect on organizations so it has both positive effect and negative effects so here we end the uh, part of downsizing coming to our original um, or main uh, topic so what are the essential requirements for making a restructuring exercise successful first of all it's important to align the uh, align your business strategy if the business strategy is right and restructuring is taken uh, is undertaken if there is alignment between these both then probably you can have a successful restructuring design an optimal organization structure it's very important to uh, imagine or extrapolate a uh, an optimum organization structure if you are sure that the number of processes and the number of employees which we are reducing will not impact our performance then we can imagine an optimum organization structure throughout the process in all the phases like from planning to implementation a committed team is required this team will plan implement and even evaluate the the changes uh with the, the process of restructuring support from top management any activity will fail if there is no support from top management the top management has to continuously understand the issues and solve them and uh give a proper support to uh, to the team which uh, team which is handling this activity and in all a, a continuous communication with almost all the stakeholders would be appreciated summary if you look at restructuring as such for ages to come organizations will have to evolve and design themselves this activity will not stop because organizations would keep on and the environment should will keep on changes and organizations will keep on responding to the to, to these changes and in this process will have to restructure and redesign themselves thanks for patience listening thank you